Hello everybody, my name's Ryan and I'm a driving instructor. Today, Parallel Park. So today I'm going to take you through Parallel Park, uh, keeping it really simple as possible. This is the automatic version. I'm going to read out bits of the manual one as well from the book. It's a combination of static video, stuff I've done at the in the car when it's been on my driveway, a bit of stuff from the dash cam in the middle and also some of the, the simulated stuff from the game that we used last time. Uh, I've flipped the video so you can't tell it's GTA 5 but it's the simulator. So let's enjoy this video. So first of all you're going to find a place to stop on the left hand side. Now the examiner might ask you to stop immediately on the left hand side or they may not actually do this. Sometimes what they do is they make you park next to the car that you're going to prepare, you're going to do the parallel park on. I've seen this a few times on driving tests now, where they've actually briefed it earlier on in the test, and when they pulled alongside another car, they would expect you to reverse park behind the other car. Now this actually exists on page 246 of the guide. Um, it says, please be aware that drivers may not be aware of your intentions and what to do next. What we're going to do is going to stop in a safe, convenient, and legal location on the left-hand side, first of all. Having done that, we're then going to move up and parallel with the parked vehicle ahead. Now, this is where the name parallel part used to originally come from. The vehicle should be level with or slightly ahead of the parked vehicle. And also depend on the size of the gap behind you, but in most circumstances, the examiner will give you two car lengths or more to do the manoeuvre. If you're going to do this in the advanced version, then it should be at least one and a half times the length of your own vehicle so you can get in. Now the manual version of this diverges at this point. In the auto, you would literally select reverse and then using the brake pedal, you would reverse using the brake. You wouldn't use any gas unless there was a little bit of camber or there was an uphill climb to do maybe. But most of the time you're letting the car creep using the brake pedal whilst mm -hmm. in reverse. So on page 247 it goes into using the clutch. However, in the auto we don't have one. So we take our time. First of all, we would put uh, about half a turn to the left. Now this is the one-to-one -one method. But in some circumstances, like the book itself, it says... You, could, you go full lock left. I wouldn't advise that because you've got nowhere to turn the wheel then. What I would do, first of all, is turn the wheel half a turn so the spoke that's normally on the bottom of the wheel is at the top. And you're going to turn it towards the kerb. When you've turned towards the kerb, then you're going to gently release the brake, having a good look all the way around, 360 degrees, every single bit of glass in the car. As you're reversing, you're then going to continue continue to monitor your progress. As you're monitoring your progress, what you're really looking for in the left-hand mirror is to see the kerb almost disappear. You want to see the tarmac on the road on the left-hand side. And if the kerb disappears, then you're going to have to do more steering later on. But what you want to see is effectively a triangle between the side of the car and the kerb in the left hand mirror in the big mirror on the left when you've got to that point 360 look around observe identify turn the wheel away from the kerb one full turn so the wheel is upside down again now this doesn't always work it sometimes is a bit of mystery around it sometimes what you've got to do is you've got to turn the wheel a little bit more or a little, a little bit less this is where the camera comes in useful so if you've got a camera fitted and it tells you where the lines are, you put the blue line just next to the kerb on the left hand side. And as you let go of the brake, the car will neatly drop into position without you actually doing anything. As long as you're maintaining the steering angle, not steering more, not steering less, the car will sit next to the kerb. If you don't have the camera, then all you do is you've lined it up and you gently reverse backwards. As you're monitoring that, if you've got a blind spot mirror, great, you'll be able to see the kerb. If you haven't, then you want a really decent look over your shoulder to see where the kerb is. 
as the curb comes into sight and you begin to straighten up the car then you begin to turn the take the turn off back to straight again i would probably straighten up i would probably straighten up so that the wheel is now pointing straight ahead your hands are straight your wheels are straight you drop the car back a couple of meters on a driving test it suggests that you full lock either way i wouldn't advise that um, one you can hit the car on the left hand side as you're paralleling up with him and um, the other one is that sometimes what happens is you hit the curb really quickly and if you hit the curb then you get a minor if you're out of position you can see down the side of the car most examiners won't initially fail you what they'll expect you to do is do a little wiggle in the left now there is a get out of jail free card here i'm going to give you this for free is if you've hit the curb on the left hand side as you full lot left then put it in drive and let the car creep forward that should just gently pull you across the curb as i show in this little bit of video here we're going to reverse about two or three meters and then you've completed your maneuver Well, I hope you liked that video. Uh, bits of information there. If you if you did like the video, like the video, comment, tell us what you think about it. And if you want to become a member, become a member. I hope that you enjoy your weekend. Bye.